Hey everybody, it's Glenn back with another Clash Royale analysis video. We're taking a look at the set in CRL West between Igor and Lindsay. Perhaps one of the greatest sets played in Clash Royale esports history, at least in CRL West. I mean, it was unbelievable. This is game number two. If you missed game number one, it's in the notes. Be sure to check it out. We're going to be breaking down all three games in this series. This is game number two. And this featured three Musketeers and Royal Hogs. This is a lineup that I think has started to emerge as a very viable option. Not just in the pro level play. But I've seen it in ladder. I've seen it in uh, classic challenges, grand challenges. I've seen it starting to pop up a lot more. And we saw it here. It was being used by Igor Lindsay used minor triple spell with giant, which I thought was fascinating. So let's get into it again. Nothing, nothing really doing to start. These guys are just kind of waiting to see who's going to make that first move. And so we see Lindsay already coming out with one of the three spells. It ends up being log, zap, and fireball that Lindsay will be using. Bandit on the left, and the counter is Night Witch. We have the three Musketeers already being played. So usually what I've seen when I've gone up against three Musketeers and Royal Hogs is you play three Musketeers in the back, obviously. You let them walk in because it takes 16 seconds to get to the bridge. And then if you have enough, if you want to run Royal Hogs, then you go for it. We don't have it here. We have a minor played in the back by Lindsay, which I thought was fascinating. And we're going to talk about minor a little bit um as we go through this game i thought minor was going to get a hit on the tower because of that log get, get that pushed the royal ghost back but it didn't kind of a sneaky heal spirit right there to help the royal ghost nothing doing because e was stops that another three musketeers plate in the back of the tower we have the Night Witch stopping this tag. This band, the bandit, went and hit the Night Witch instead of the tower. Fireball gets the two Musketeers on the on the right side, and here come the Royal Hogs. Another Miner gets played in the front. Log pushes back, and instead of that Musketeer getting to the tower, it hits the Miner instead. So twice already, we've had a defensive Miner played. And this is where the pros are, I mean, fantastic about this. And this is something, if you're if you're trying to level up, trying to get to the ranks, trying to get to legend, there's something to keep in mind. It's that sometimes you just have to suspend imagination of what a card is. Because we see minor, we think, okay, just throw minor up here and it will do damage until, you know, it gets taken out. But... Twice already we've seen Lindsay use a defensive uh, minor as defense. So if we rewind this here, here comes the Royal Hogs. And minor gets played in front. Now, keep in mind that Fireball's out of cycle right here for Lindsay. Can't use Fireball because he doesn't have it uh, in his hand yet. So he's got to think of something else. And this is a triple spell deck. So he's saying, okay, I have to use minor. I can't use minor as offense right now. I have to use him as defense. We've seen this is the second time he's done this, where he has to play minor here. If he just plays minor up up front, like, okay, I'm just going to trade. No, that's that's a tower down for um, for Lindsay. So he says, okay, I have to I have to stop this attack. And this is a great placement by, um, by Lindsay with this minor here, because it, this musketeer is going to attack the minor, and minor's pretty beefy, so it should be Hold up while Miner takes care of these hogs here. And here comes the log that helps. Pushes the musketeer back. And so with the skeletons helping as well, nothing doing. So not much happening in the first couple of minutes. We're now into double time. We have both lanes being being pressured. By both players. And here comes the giant. So we have a giant miner 
again, but it's three spells. Here comes three musketeers, and they get zapped and fireball. But there's a king tower activation, so we have to take a look at that. So before we get to the e whiz and the funny dance, here comes the three musketeers. They're played right here instead of being played in the back. They're now being played in the front. Now, I mentioned it earlier. It takes 16 seconds if you play the three musketeers in the back. It takes 16 seconds for the musketeers to get to the bridge. So you cut off that time, obviously, by playing it closer. But I think Igor also saw that, okay, this giant's right here. We have to play it up front because that walk time to get to here is not going to be fast enough to stop this this giant now there is a royal ghost that's doing something here and the bandit but you just can't take any chances at this point it is double elixir time you got to play it up front so lindsay says okay all right you played th three musketeers up front let me get rid of them so he does a zap but the zap hits the king tower and those the fireball takes care takes them out so what I want to do is I want to look at the grid. Royal API has this fantastic grid that shows exactly where everything was played. I showed it to you in, in the previous game here. If we look at the grid and we take a look at the zap and the fireball and the three musketeers, let's look at the three musketeers first. So number three is where the three musketeers got played in that moment right there. And so if we look at where the zap was played, that zap on number two was just one tile up. I think if if it was one tile further up, perhaps he still gets those three musketeers and then he could throw the fireball where it was, where it was number three, and then those three musketeers still get taken out. But because of what happened the way it did, we now have a King Tower activation, which I think changed the whole game as well. Because now, with the King Tower activation, Lince can't just throw a Miner up at the front. Now, he's been using Miner as a defensive a defensive helper when Rohogs come down or when somebody's trying to get to the Tower of Bandit or whatever the case is. He's been using it as a defensive tower. Now, if he tries to use an offensive tower, the king's going to say, nope, and he's going to start um, blasting them. So this changed a lot of the approach to this game just because of one tile difference. It was, I mean, it was unbelievable. So that was just something to note in terms of how everything changed because of that zap and where the three musketeers was played. I don't think Igor was really trying to bait out a king tower activation. No, he was just trying to get to this giant right here so he could, so he could take them out. But let's say I said, nope, I'm going to do that fireball. It just so happened that the King Tower is now activated. And now the game continues. And we see this e -Wiz try to stop this bandit. And it keeps pump faking. So instead of a fully healthy e -Wiz getting into the tower, he does only one shot on the, on the tower and not two. And here is another... Minor plate in the back as defense. Three Musketeers gets played at the river, which was unbelievable because you had an E was right there that was stopping him. They get zap fireballed. Here come the Royal Hogs. Night Witch. Log. And the Night Witch just does enough. That Hunter could only do so much. And so here, Lindsay says, okay, here comes the push. Here comes the push with 145 left. Giant played in the back. Here comes Ewis. Royal Ghost is going to hit him. And the Royal Ghost will get taken out. Now you have a Night Witch in the back. This is really, really good. And that log was really fantastic because if you blinked, you missed it with that heal spirit that was supposed to come down and heal both the bandit and hunter. It doesn't, it's gone. And then, because this push was so uh, was so slow and played in the back, you get another giant there. Fireball was fantastic. That cleared the board, or uh, just about. Then you have a hunter, and then now, Lince says, "Okay, we're going with we're going with minor. I know King's gonna King's gonna blast it, but 
I feel like this is an opportunity to do it. So he does. And now a, <laughs> a massive counter push by Igor. Lince fireballs them out. Bandit with those skeletons. I mean, that was incredible. And then after all that, the bandit, a bandit, still gets in on the tower. So if we rewind that, I mean, that was just a... I mean, this is a massive counter push. This is about whether Lince could survive this moment right here. The log first. Then the fireball that cleared most of it. I thought that Roller Ghost was going to hit the tower. It didn't. Then those skeletons here. Perhaps the skeletons get played up a little bit more. But if they, I think if they did, then they probably had gotten... Uh, smacked by this bandit right here. So this is a really good one because then this bandit dashes. And then instead that that dash is now gone. It's already been taken care of. And so instead of two dashes on this Night Witch, it's just one. And then only one dash to the tower by a bandit. It could have been two. Right there in that sequence. So that was really, I mean, fantastic defense by Lindsay because that look, that sequence looked like it was going to be game over right there. But he's still trailing with one minute to go. So I was figuring at this point, like, okay, perhaps he's going to do one more big push with Giant, going to bring everybody to the tower and then hope for the best. Also, you have to keep in mind that this is a triple spell deck. So he, there is the other option of just spamming log zap and, and fireball until um, until the minute is up. So he has options. I was thinking giant, and he does go with giant. And here comes the Royal Hogs instead. Log. And you think that Ice Golem would do something, but it really didn't do much in terms of blocking or playing defense. And then you got two giants here, three musketeers. They get taken out by Zap and Fireball. Another Miner as a helper and not an attacker, which I thought was fascinating. If you look at that Miner, when it comes in, it doesn't get to the tower. Because I thought if it did, yes, it would have gotten a couple hits on the tower. But I think Lindsay was saying, okay, it's more important that we need to get this giant to the tower. Because if the Miner gets played here, this giant's gone. And yes, he does get damage on the tower. It's just that it's probably the trade-off is not is not there. So let's take out all these guys right here. And then hopefully the giant will get through. It's gonna get dropped at the river, and he has so much splash damage. And by he, I'm talking about Igor. You talk about then two night witches. Because it was played so slowly. A bandit, two bandits. I mean, this is incredible. All those bats. I mean, goodness gracious. Log, e -whiz, and you just have to hope that that they do enough. And those three musketeers came in, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Another miner, another log, and a fireball just gets in in time, and that's the game. And game one was decided by 29 HP. Game two is decided by 22 HP, and Lince survives it. But, I mean, that last minute was incredible. Let's take a look at that that final sequence there. So we have a minute to go. And then, like I said, he has an option. Um, Lince has an option for for just spamming spells at the tower or going with a major giant push. He decides to go with the major giant push. He's able to cycle... Back to get two giants on the board. Meanwhile, the cycling is allowing him to to take care of those those the two musketeers that went to the left side. And there's so many bats to deal with. This is where I thought things were were really, and I'd say questionable. But uh, some people brought this up on social media in terms of this game. 
you know, they said it wasn't the most fantastic game played, but they were wondering about this sequence right here. So the Rohawks come down, and then you have the three Musketeers, which was really weird. Now, like I said, if you play, it takes 16 seconds for the three Musketeers to come from the back of the tower to the bridge. So obviously you can't play it there. He plays, let's say uh, Igor plays it right at the river. And I think there was kind of a hope that maybe Lindsay would just use a fireball and zap on them so that he would not use a fireball on the tower because this is a <laughs> this is a triple spell deck. So in a way, this seemed like a bait by um, by Igor to say, okay, use your fireball here so that you don't use it on the princess tower and meanwhile you still have two hogs that are that are on the the left side coming to the tower so a, a lot of people question this move i can understand if if the idea was to bait out a fireball now obviously we saw in this case that there was uh, another fireball plate afterward but i think that was kind of the idea behind using these three musketeers maybe there could have been something else Maybe uh, another uh, world delivery band. I mean, anything else that would have um, taken place instead of a nine elixir card. So that's what I think happened here in this sequence. So fire goes, fireball gets played and zap. And I and I should mention that that sequence is pretty important, as we saw here uh, in the ending. So fireball fireball gets played and zap, and that was the difference. Now, why is that important? Well, we saw with one second left, we saw the fireball and zap hit that tower. If we rewind to this point right here, in his hand, okay, so fireball has been used by Lindsay in his hand at this moment. He still has a zap in his hand. And then we have all the sequence right here. So Zap is now not in his hand. And so Fireball and Zap are now in his hand. So Fireball and Zap are now out. And in order to get Fireball and Zap back, he has to cycle three cards really, really fast in 12 seconds. <laughs> and not just 12 seconds, because he has to actually throw both cards. So... He's three cards away from a fireball. And he's four cards away from a zap. Miner's one. Log is two. Skeleton's three. There's the fireball. And there's the zap. So there, it was important the sequence in which um, he played that ending. Or else perhaps he doesn't win the game uh, the way he did. I mean, it's just really incredible the the presence of mind to to know exactly what to do and when to do it in that moment. I mean, two games decided by fewer than 30 HP each. It, it's really, I mean, it was really incredible just what these guys did. Now, we're, we're going to go through the stats here in, in, a, in a moment. I mean, we see the... The uh, spells play 28 to 7. I mean, this again, this is a triple spell deck, but a 1 to 4, a 4 to 1 ratio by, by Lindsay is unbelievable. There's one more part uh, that I want to bring up is in this game here. If we take a look at the grid here uh, provided by World API, if we look at the minor play by Lindsay here, he played minor six times. And the six was obviously at the end. We was trying to cycle to the to the finish. But if you look at the first three, they were played in the back, as I mentioned. It kind of suspended the belief of, okay, you always have to play minor at the tower. The fourth one was, the fourth, fifth, and sixth came after the king tower activation. That fifth one was in that melee when there were two giants uh, that had crossed the bridge. And I was thinking, okay... Instead of using that that minor, that fifth minor 
at the tower. Let's try to take down whatever whatever was trying to stop those two giants. So I so I thought the minor play was was really interesting by by Lince, and it paid off uh, in this win uh, here. Both players are one and one. There's one more game to go as we break down all three games here. So we're going to do that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. And if you missed game one, it's in the notes. So be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.